Hi everyone, my name is Darlene Compton and I am the Knitting Politician. I live in Prince Edward Island, Canada and I am a member of the Legislative Assembly of Prince Edward Island, so an elected official and I represent the district that I live in, um, 35 to 3600 voters and um, very rural community and I love to knit. I've dis I discovered knitting about a year ago and uh, it was kind of by accident. Uh, I've always been very crafty. Uh, I like to quilt and sew and do curl work and cross stitch. And I realized last f a year ago last fall that I was something was missing in my life. And since I got elect elected, which was in May of 2015, I realized I haven't been doing anything creative. So. Last January I decided to rectify that and I thought about what I wanted to do and I knew it couldn't be quilting or stained glass, something I'd done before that needed a lot of setup and a lot of prep time and a lot of packing away time. So I thought maybe I'll learn to knit and I've never knit before in my life and, and my knitting story is um, when I was 12 or 13 my Aunt Margaret who was a Cape Bretoner and she didn't mince words. Lovely lady and so very kind and she tried to teach me to knit. I probably did three sessions and I'm left-handed so she was trying to teach me left-handed even though she was right-handed and at the end of the second or third session whatever it was she just looked at me and said you're not teachable so <laughs> that was it for knitting. But I thought well I'm an adult it's some you know 40 years later 45 years later, maybe I can learn to knit. Uh, I've mastered some of the other craft, crafting artsy things to do, so I started looking and I realized that there was knitting at community school, which is, was in Murray Harbor, which is still in my district, and it's about a half an hour drive from where I live, and it was Tuesday mornings. Well, Tuesday morning I could do. Uh, there was no committee meeting, um, my time is flexible, but Usually in the evening I can't really plan anything because there are a lot of meetings to go to. So um, off I went to community school Tuesday morning in Murray Harbor. And thank you, Cheryl, for being such a kind and patient teacher. I did learn to knit. She taught me right-handed. Um, I started with a scarf um, and I discarded, I frogged it basically. Um, and then I, uh, it was right around my birthday. My husband said, let's go up to Fleece and Harmony. And so check out Fleece and Harmony. They have a, a podcast and they have their own mill. Just, it's 9.6 kilometers up the road. And they do their own uh, dyeing, and spinning, dyeing, and, and, and knitting. And so they have a, a knitting podcast and it talk, talks about their mill and their farm. They raise sheep. So the, the wool from the sheep is used uh, in their yarn. And they uh, try to... Uh, access everything locally. So so off we went for my birthday up to Fleece and Harmony and Russ, uh, my husband, picked out some, he said pick out some wool and or some yarn and I did and uh, it was a worsted weight. Um, crocus was the color and last January, well really any January, um, something called crocus really is inviting. So uh, I picked out a yarn and worsted weight and it was called crocus and uh, Jennifer helped me find a pattern. I remember I'm a beginner knitter and uh, so I picked out uh, or she picked out Pearl Ridge Scarf by Stephen West. So uh, it's free on Ravelry and I knit a cowl and it is a beautiful shade of pale almost lilac. Kind of hard to pick up here. Um, and it's basically garter stitch, some stockinette, and garter. And I immediately went to work and knit that up fairly quickly. I love it. I love the color. Um, it's nice and warm. And I love the yarn. So that was one of my first projects. I did some hats. Uh, basically used some of, I'm, a, I'm not a yarn snob. I'll get that out there right now. Uh, used some Lion Brand Woolies Thick and Quick and knit up a couple of hats, one for my husband and one for my son. And uh, then I started to think about what do I want to make next? And 
when you're in the Legislative Assembly, which is where we meet to um, discuss um, what government is doing, and I'm in opposition, so to question what government is doing, um, when you come home, you really want to decompress. So I said, I'm going to make a blanket. It just just stockinette and garter. So I found a picture. I couldn't find um, the pattern online, but I saw, I, I saw a picture. I think it might have been Pinterest. And I started knitting a blanket. So here's my blanket. And I did this last spring, mostly. Um, kind of hard to see. It's being blown out. But, um, you know, pretty basic creams, grays, a little bit of variegated. And um, it was great. It was great therapy. It was great fun to knit. You just sit up watching TV and you didn't have to think about it. Just, uh, just knit. So um, <clears throat> I, uh, I did that up fairly quickly. Um, even we sit, the legislature sits on Tuesday and Thursday evenings till 9 o'clock. So I'm not home till usually after 10, 1030. Even on those evenings, I want to sit and knit. And it helps me decompress. So it's a wonderful hobby for stress. So um, I did most of my knitting. I'll get back to my first visit to Fleece and Harmony as a knitter. And um, they had beautiful uh, Knit Picks needles. And uh, you know, you knit everything in the round. Um, and I got a set of Knit Picks. So I, before that, I was just using straight needles that I had for a long time and never used. They might have been my grandmother or my mother's or they might have been my aunt's. And so I got these beautiful knit picks and I was sold on those. So I've since gotten a kit. And um, so I've done the blanket. Uh, then I did, we went south last spring. So I decided I'd make something with just Bernat cotton the dishcloth cotton and I knit um, a beach bag. Very simple. I'll find the pattern and, and show you. Um, so I like to knit in different uh, with different fibers but I do appreciate um, a lovely independent dyer wool. But sometimes you just want to knit. So that's part of what I do. So um, a little bit more about me. Uh, I'm from the community that I represent, uh, spent uh, the first, until, until high school, graduated high school and then got married really early in life. We moved to Alberta, so my husband was in the oil business, so um, uh, through the jigs and reels we moved back home when the kids were a little bit old, well, we moved home fairly soon, we moved to Maine. Uh, moved back to the island and lived in Charlottetown, which is a capital city. The children went to school there for uh, a number of years. And um, when our son, uh, we have two, Katie is, is the oldest and Glenn is younger. And when Glenn graduated high school, we left home. <laughs> Usually it's the kids that leave home, but it was us that left home. And we went to uh, the Middle East, to Abu Dhabi in the United Arab Emirates. And we're there for five years, and it was a wonderful experience. Um, it wasn't easy to be without our children, uh, especially for me. And uh, then we went to Indonesia, to Jakarta. We were there for um, almost five years, then moved back home. So um, not only did we move back to Prince Edward Island, we purchased um, my dad's family homestead from my uncle. And it's been in our family since 1836. We're Selkirk settlers. Uh, ancestors. I'm a seventh generation islander. Um, we have a water view out most windows, which I'll show you in, in uh, future podcasts. I hope that this can be a regular thing. I'm not planning on having it uh, be an hour long or two hours long like some of the knitting podcasts, and, and it'll be a variety. I thought it would be a great way to, to um, tell you a little bit about me and to talk about knitting because it's my new passion. Uh, but I love what I do. I'm an elected official. I love where I live and where I grew up and the ability to be able to help people in my community. So that's really important to me. And I'll also highlight some of the places in my community, two of which are, are, uh, are mills that both produce their own yarn. So that's was sort of the catalyst around this is to be able to talk about where I live and it's a tourist destination, so that's another reason to talk about it. And uh, to tell you a little bit more about 
our our end of the island, our little corner of Prince Edward Island. So we're the southeastern corner on the Northumberland Strait. Um, take the ferry to Nova Scotia from um, 10 miles down the road. Uh, it's very rural. We have 80 acres um, and water view for most windows. It's very snowy today. It's a beautiful winter day. Um, we've got a pond across the road and there have been people skating there. My husband was out last night for a uh, after dark skate and um, it was a beautiful beautiful evening cold but beautiful so we're definitely in a rural part of the province and most of the province is rural we're about a half an hour from Charlottetown and uh, yeah um, I'll tell you a little bit about what I'm working on um, so Russ my husband who would complain about knitting some because I spend um, a lot of my time when I'm home knitting uh, also endorses it because for Christmas he gave me um, my first sweater course at Fleece and Harmony. So right now I'm doing my first sweater, and it's in uh, one of their one of their yarns. The color is called Twilight, and uh, it's an Erin weight. It's a beautiful variegated blue purple, and uh, I'm getting there. Um, I it's top down and it's um, flax by whoever it is. I'll have to put down notes, I guess. So this is all new to me, this whole YouTubing. Um, I also am on Ravelry. It's Darlene Pons, D, capital D, A-R-L-E-N-E, -E, capital P, O N D, capital P, and then O-N-D-S, Darlene Pons. So I am on Ravelry. You can send me a message if you want. I'm hoping this will become a regular um, thing. And uh, yeah, um, we have two cats and they might show up sometime in one of these podcasts. Uh, it's pretty quiet now. I'm here by myself. I'm sitting at my desk. I do work from home a lot. Um, constituency work is basically 24-7. So, um, you know, you try and uh, help people as much as you can and you want to be available to them. Especially on Prince Edward Island, people want to know their politicians. They want to have a, a fairly close relationship with them and they expect you to be there when they need them. So. Um, and that's all, that's all great. Um, something that I do enjoy. I'll, uh, talk a little bit about, um, in future podcasts about, um, we're a f the food island. We have wonderful food, seafood and potatoes and dairy and vegetables and wonderful food. And anyone that comes here talks about what a great place it is for a vacation. It's quiet. Um, you know, you want to get away from things, uh, the noise and hustle bustle of the city, uh, my daughter lives in Vancouver, so quite well aware of that. And uh, so, yeah, people like to come here to get away. Uh, they like to experience. Uh, we have a local guy who takes you clam digging if you want to do that. Um, they We have some wonderful restaurants, and we do have a culinary institute here in Charlottetown. So that has really, um, I guess, um, made food something very important and an experience not only for islanders but for the visitors who come here so so that's really part of it too um uh i do have a bit of a yarn collection um some of it is just from michael's um something that i like the color of um will i use it i might i might not i do have a bit of a stash um i'm always looking at yarn i just purchased some yarn to make a trying to make beach cover up. I'm hoping that maybe in the not too distant future we get to, to take a few days off. And so it's a cotton, a Pima cotton um, uh, bamboo blend maybe. I don't know. I ordered it online because I want something with, with cotton. I was thinking cotton linen and, and I'm new to this. I really don't know what to look for and it is trial and error and um, I'm new to the podcast world. But since uh, Kim and Jennifer at Fleece and Harmony started doing your podcast. I think they've done six now. I said to them, okay, girls, I'm watching your podcast. Where else can, you know, what other podcasts are out there? So I uh, realize there are lots of them. And I've watched Grocery Girls. Um, they're fun. Um, one of them reminds me a lot of a friend I have from Alberta. So that's uh, fun. Um, I've watched uh, Carlos, uh, Arnie and Carlos. I've watched uh, the Fruity Knitter, Fruity Knitting podcast, uh, very technical and uh, maybe a little more hardcore than I am. 
as I said, I'm a beginning knitter, and that's part of the reason I want to do this, so that people who are just starting to knit aren't intimidated or turned off by, oh well, they're doing, you know, color work, and they're, you know, they're doing cables, and uh, that's more than I'll ever get into. But believe me, if you enjoy it, you'll get there. And I just finished my first cable hat, again, from uh, Jennifer's own pattern from Fleece and Harmony, and because they're my neighbors and my friends, um, of course, I'm doing their pattern, and it was, uh, I did it for my husband for Valentine's Day, a per chat hat pattern on their Ravelry, and I'll have to get the Ravelry, uh, name, but it's Fleece and Harmony, I'm sure you can find it, and I made it with their worsted weight gray seagull, maybe, yarn, um, I made some mistakes, but it basically looks like it's supposed to, uh, my husband doesn't care, so... <laughs> He likes it. It was my first chance, or uh, first try at cabling. And uh, yeah, you need to pay a little more attention than you do when you're making a blanket. Um, but that's fine too. So sometimes you want a challenge and you want to have to count and you want to have to pay attention and other times you don't. So um, I'll continue to make blankets. I've made one for our son and his girlfriend. I made one for our daughter and her boyfriend. Um, I've made one, I made two. Um, as um, prizes or giveaways uh, or auction items at benefits and fundraisers. So it's part of what I would be, do I go to the benefits, I go to the fundraisers and help support people who are in need in my community and um, lots of times there's a silent auction or there's a giveaway. So I've donated a couple of blankets to those type of events and um, a shawl. I made a shawl and it was uh, one of the door prizes at a local um, Christmas concert in my district so lots of opportunity to to knit and I can give it away if um, if I feel like it and sometimes I'll just knit and I know it's not going to be for me it's going to be a gift for someone or it's going to be um, something I give away so lots of um, ability and outlet for my knitting um, yeah so here I am at my desk. Uh, I can't say I have a lot more to say. Well, maybe I'll talk about the new yarns. I talk about finished objects. Oh yeah, so the Wool Ease Lion Brand Thick and Quick. I have started another blanket. I've got it on my needles and um, I'll just pick that up whenever I feel like just knitting and I don't have to think about it. So working on that, I'm working at my sweater uh, which I'll run and get. If you just hold on. There, so I decided to move my location. I'm trying uh, different spots around my house. I see there's a glare on here. Maybe I'll turn this a little bit and move this way. Um, <clears throat> move my tulips so you can see them. Those are local tulips. They grow them in a warehouse. They do a lot of wholesale tulip um, sales. So my sweater that I'm making, which is, um, uh, let me see, it's from Tin Can Knits, and it's one of their free patterns. It's called Flax. So I'm making that sweater, and I'm making it from this beautiful, beautiful variegated yarn from Fleece and Harmony. see it. Um, very, very pretty. Top down and then there's this garter stitch um, kind of accent down the sleeve. So um, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, I'll tell you, I had the body almost totally finished and realized, oh yes, I talked about um, decreasing because it was too big. So when I was almost finished of that, the body, I realized, oh, okay, you better rip it out and do some more, <laughs> do some more sewing, do some more knitting. So that's fine. It's great practice and it's easy because I, once I did the decreases, you're just knitting. And again, on my uh, Knit Picks needles, um, I'll show you the, um, this right here. Oh, that's good. You saw my nostrils. Um, with the Bernat yarn, um, I made this lovely beach bag. And it uh, came with me to Jamaica last year, and hopefully I'll get to use it again soon. 
So um, that's pretty much it. I'll continue maybe in two weeks to have another uh, podcast. And I hope that uh, you'll watch. I'll, I'll share this on Facebook. I'm new to this. I don't have an Instagram. Well, I might have an Instagram. I don't use it. Um, so yeah, I'm on Ravelry. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about what I'm knitting. I'll talk a little bit more about my community and my role as an MLA. Um, yeah, I'm, I said I was in opposition. I'm in opposition. Uh, we're going to have an election here on Prince of Island uh, within the next, well, seven months for sure, but probably this spring. So we're getting ready for that. I've already started a little bit of door to to door, to door and uh, l listening to people, uh, what their issues are and what they'd like to bring forward, uh, what we'd like what they'd like us to bring forward during the election. So, um, so yeah, probably not gonna have as much time to knit uh, for um, the next few months because uh, there's a lot of campaigning. Uh, once the, the writ is dropped, away we go and, and, and I'm out every day, 12 hours a day usually, and uh, going door to door. Um, so yeah, but I'll be back on uh, YouTube, hopefully in a couple of weeks. I hope uh, you'll subscribe. And I hope that you enjoyed what I have to say. So for now, um, keep calm and yarn on.